answers on tests. I don't know how the teachers have enough time to do that, but they could just, you know, dictate to the scribe, and that would be their essay question or their essay answer. And of course, reduced format, written formats. And so, those are uh, some of the things that, that may address the processing speed part of it. And, you know, as I said before, a big part of the processing speed in the working memory is, is that it just interferes with efficiency and being able to get things done quickly. And it makes the kid's life miserable because things that take other students, you know, they can do it in half the time or a third of the time and they wind up having to take all evening. So some of these strategies, I think, can help kids and kind of ease the, <coughs> the pressure. And it's very easy to do things in school, like provide um, you know, printed copies of notes and giving them extended time on tests and, um, you know, allowing them to take the test at the end of the day or... I think a lot of those things can be done easily in the school. At home it gets more problematic because of the homework demands, but if homework can be, you know, uh, abbreviated, that would be a reasonable thing to do for a kid, especially if they're showing mastery or that they're learning the material. So, I did just include a little part at the end that, that again talks about the, you know, how it, you know, an IQ test, like the most frequently given IQ test, looks at those four broad areas, verbal comprehension and perceptual reasoning. And you know, these are higher level abilities, being able to reason and comprehend and problem solve and think on a, an abstract level, but then the IQ tests also have processing speed tests where you have to, they have to, you have to copy things quickly or scan information or uh, look at uh, you know, a page, <coughs> all these uh, different kinds of figures that you just have to go through and just check the, check the animals, nothing else. And so that's selective attention. Can you selectively attend and do it very quickly? Or everything else. So when those scores are really low, we talked about the working memory tasks, uh, you can have a general ability index that is an optional score that's just made up of verbal comprehension and perceptual reasoning. And the reason this is important is because um, often decisions are made about, um, you know, special ed, getting special ed, and one of the things they still use, although it's changing, but they still use is that discrepancy between your IQ and your achievement in reading, or your IQ and your achievement in math. And so if you take out the processing speed and working memory, that gives you a fairer picture of their abilities. So their abilities could be significantly higher if you took out working memory and processing speed. Um, does that make sense, what I'm saying? That you, you know, then you would have an IQ that's, that could be 110, and if your reading score is 79, then you've got a big gap there, you know, 25 or 30 points. But if you include the working memory and the processing speed in the IQ test, it could be 89, you know, and your reading score is 79, and they say, well, 10 points, that's not enough of a gap between your achievement and your ability. So, increasingly, they're starting to use that general ability index to, as, to help decide, uh, make decisions about special ed. So I think I'll stop there, and if you have questions, that's good. If you're requesting a child be evaluated for special ed, and you... Oh. If you're requesting that a, your child be evaluated for special ed and they have something like epilepsy or something else that you already know their working memory is slow, can you request that the, the team uh, use the general ability index or is it totally up to them? I think it's totally up to them. I, I know that some districts are adopting that general ability index. Um, so I think it's up to them, but I think it, I think it could be argued to do that. You mean if you were trying to get some kind of specific learning disability help beyond the medical condition? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's worth, uh, uh, it's an argument, it's a reasonable argument. Uh, hello, 
Well, uh, so what I hear you saying is, if, they're, if you're looking at the IQ test, the, if they have weak processing speed, it's fair to say about the student, you're as intelligent as your peers, but you just will require longer to complete a task. The other, the second question I have is, in terms of ADHD and you said, you know, you have to rule out things like dyslexia or the perfectionism. Can you repeat how ADHD factors into that? Is that something you're, you're saying you have to rule out separate? Well, uh, as far as identifying it, uh, you know, you would want to see if, if ADHD is, the, is a condition that this, the child has. And you do that by taking a, taking a history of the kid's behavior and, and then you would have uh, teachers and parents fill out rating scales and a teacher could do an observation or a psychologist could do an observation of the students functioning in the classroom. And that would clarify, that would give some clarification as to whether or not an attention disorder is present. But then, I think your question was, okay, so you, how do you rule that out? Well, you rule it, you know, you decide whether or not it was the condition by doing those kinds of things. Because, you know, work, working memory and processing speed are very often associated with ADHD, so I'm having trouble separating them is, is sort of what I'm getting at. Yes, it is. But if you have, if you also show that you are attending pretty well, of course, then it's hard to sort out if you have working memory weaknesses. It is hard to sort out, but if you don't have, you know, if you show that you just have a few of the symptoms, then you, it probably isn't ADHD. It's probably working memory and processing speed weaknesses uh, or something else. But you, usually you have to have a certain number of symptoms and they have to be at a certain level of intensity. And so things like disorganization and forgetfulness and um, you know, impulsivity and restlessness, if that's a part of it. So I think as far as just establishing I, th I think it's, first of all, difficult. It's kind of difficult, but I think if you can kind of establish that ADHD is probably not the case, uh, then you can sort of say, okay, that's it. It's probably just these cognitive deficits they have, separate from that. Um, in your research, have you found anything that can improve somebody's working memory or processing speed? like? Learning RX as they can train your brain and increase your increase that. Have you heard anything? Yeah, and I think I'll give that question to you. <laughs> and you're nodding my head. Um, uh, yeah, there. It's um, the one thing that appears to be promising is um, a computer program that um, uh, has been a computer. I sounds a computer intervention treatment program, really, that's been developed by a Swedish uh, neuropsychologist uh, and uh, uh, researcher, Tor Torkel Klingberg, um, and it's called COGMED. Uh, if you Google COGMED, C-O-G-M-E-D, uh, you will his, that website will come up and there, it actually is an excellent website for learning more about working memory and how it impacts daily life for different developmental levels. Anyway, this, uh, this, the, there's been a number of research studies on children and adults who have been through this, this program um, and uh, that appear promising. Uh, so that uh, certain, certain kinds of uh, issues that affect people with poor working memory uh, seem for many people seem to get better. So I think that, you know, I think we'll probably hear a lot more about that in the future. Um, and uh, it may well, I don't think it's, a, I wouldn't expect it to be a cure-all, but it, it certainly may improve uh, it certainly seems to improve certain uh, aspects of cognitive performance. There's no research to support that. I mean, it's a controversial 
uh, treatment that really doesn't have any research that supports it. Um, so, you know, I'm, that's all I can say about it, really. Yeah, I would like to say that I, that I read that book, uh, The Brain That Changes Itself. Have you read that one? No, but neuroplasticity is, you yeah. know. And it was just like a an amazing book, and so it kind of gives you hope.